The reading today is taken from the book of Proverbs, beginning right at the beginning of that chapter, verses uh, 1 to 7, the first chapter. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. For learning about wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for gaining instruction in wise dealing, righteousness, justice, and equity, to teach shrewdness to the simple, knowledge and prudence to the young. Let those, let the wise also hear and gain in learning, and the discerning acquire skill. To understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. Amen. There's more, is there? Hold on, there's more. (laughs) (laughs) The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Wow, that was the best bit. (laughs) I was going to say, I could miss that bit out. So I don't know if you've ever read the book of Proverbs. It's quite a long book and quite a lot of it is um, lists of different sayings and phrases. Um, And uh, it makes some interesting reading. And I picked out a couple that actually follow each other that are two of my favourites from the book of Proverbs. Um, Proverbs chapter 16 verse 30 says, and I'm reading this from the Good News translation because I think it puts it best. Watch out for people who grin and wink at you. They have thought of something evil. <laughs> Salutary advice, I think. And uh, the, next, the next verse, the following verse, actually, I didn't realise they followed each other until I looked them up. It's actually my absolute favourite. Arlene's laughing because she's probably just read it. She's looked it up already. So this is one of my definite favourites. Grey hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. Now, there is wisdom if ever I heard it. There are lots of other sections in the book of Proverbs. It's made of, it's really a little bit of a compilation of um, sayings and phrases and wisdom, of poetry, of writings. And um, traditionally, it's been attributed to Solomon, um, who is said to have written over 3,000 Proverbs. Some of the material may well go back to the time of Solomon and Solomon himself. Other of it is probably later, but written in the same tradition, written in the same inspiration, and they've been brought together as this book that is quite unusual. It's quite different from many of the other books in the Bible. So um, if you are prepared, to, I would encourage you to have a read through, maybe not all in one go. I do sometimes. Think, I think it's maybe something to just pick out perhaps a couple of proverbs each day or one of the sections. But in the next three weeks, we are looking at the book of Proverbs, and we're looking at um, three key passages that come towards the front. And today, we start with the introduction. Good place to start, I would reckon. We start with the introduction because it explains the purpose of the book. What is the reason for these Proverbs? What is the reason for them? Why are they there? Well, our reading says that they came, they are there for learning and understanding. But most importantly, learning and understanding about what? About life. About life and how to live it. It's much more than facts and knowledge. Wisdom is about how to use those facts and knowledge that we know. Wisdom is about how to live a life of righteousness, justice and equity. As one version said, it's there to teach us to do what is right, just and fair. What is right, just and fair. That's much harder to work out, much harder to put into practice than simply knowing about facts or information about things. And of course, it's something that we go on learning through life. We can never fully understand God. We can never fully understand how to live a life that lives out those values of righteousness, justice and equity. We are always growing, we are always learning. But the foundation of this learning comes from God. 
Much of Proverbs, if you read it, like that first one I gave to you about watching out for people who grin and wink at you, could seem like just general good advice that anyone might give you. It might not seem specifically faith-based. But this introduction, as we've heard it this morning, sets all the rest of the Proverbs in that context. In that context, and it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's why it was quite important we did hear that verse. (laughs) The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We begin our learning about how to live our lives by being rooted and grounded in God. Now that fear, when it talks about fearing God, does not mean we need to quake and tremble for God because we might be um, found out in some way or that um, he's going to be cross with us or condemn us. No, it's not that sort of fear. It's fear that is more to do with respect, with awe. We sang in one of our songs about bowing down before God. It's about recognising who God is and bowing down before him, having fear for who he is. The Good News Bible, again, puts it this way. It says, to have knowledge, you must first have reverence for the Lord. To have knowledge, you must first have reverence for the Lord. So God is the source of all wisdom. Even if sometimes it comes via other means that we might not see as God, God is the ultimate source of wisdom, even if it comes from other places. In the story of Solomon, it is God who gives Solomon the gift of wisdom. God is the one from whom we can learn. And of course, Jesus was the supreme teacher of wisdom. Think of the many parables and sayings, the Sermon on the Mount, those phrases like, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Or, first remove the plank from your own eye before the speck of others. Or, the first will be last and the last will be first. Or, the parables that he taught. All the times when he cut through right to the core issue. Um, we, in those services where we had a gospel reading today, we had the reading where Jesus talks to the young man who says, I've followed all the way, all the laws. I've li- lived to the letter of the law. And Jesus cuts through and sees that what he needs to do is to be prepared to give away his possessions. Because although he's living to the letter of the law, he's not living out of that spirit of love and generosity. Jesus was the supreme teacher of wisdom. And others recognised the wisdom that he had. In Mark 6, chapter 6, verse 2, it says, On the Sabbath, Jesus began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? So Jesus can continue to be our teacher He can help us to always go on learning about how to live life, how to be right, just and fair. Whether we're um, a child or whether we're older, we can continue to grow and continue to learn. This passage warns those who think they know it all. I don't know if you, do you know any of you know or know it all? Who think they can't possibly learn anything more. It encourages them to be open that they can still learn, they can still grow in wisdom and discernment. It says, let the wise also hear and gain in wisdom. I was trying to think of an example of this. I was discussing this with Arlene yesterday. Trying to think of an example of someone who thinks they're a bit of a knows-it-all, but actually realises they can still learn and grow. And uh, it suddenly occurred to me, my my, um, children love the programme, um, The Big Bang Theory. How many of you have watched The Big Bang Theory. If you have, you'll know the character Sheldon, who um, has that, now I'm not sure, a, a doctorate in astrophysics or something along those, along those lines, is that right? Yeah. And um, is highly intelligent, knows all the facts about the universe, can work out mathematical um, um, equations in, in his sleep. He's uh, got a brilliant mind. And he does tend to look down on people who aren't quite so intelligent as him. And one of those is his friend's girlfriend, Penny. And he doesn't really think that Penny's up to much, that she has anything to learn. Um, he has anything to learn from her. But gradually, as their relationship develops, Sheldon realises that one of the things that Penny knows about is people. She might not be intelligent in the way he is. She might not be able to understand basic physics, 
but she can understand people. And she helps Sheldon to learn more about how he relates to other people, how he can um, communicate and share with them and empathise with them. And Sheldon realises that he has an awful lot to learn from Penny. So we can all go on learning whatever our areas of wisdom and skill, we can always learn more. And in our lives, we constantly face issues where we need to discern what is right, just and fair. We constantly face issues that are, don't, are not easy decisions, where we can learn more about how to live our lives. And in those situations, we can turn to God. We can learn from Jesus through prayer, through reading the Bible, through talking to others, or maybe sometimes through surprising means that we don't expect. God can speak to us and help us as we seek to follow Jesus and exemplify him and to live a life as he would have us live it, to live out those values that he gave to us. Often when we have families bringing their children for baptism, I ask them, what is it that you uh, want for your child? What is it that's important that you want to bring them for baptism? And one of the most common responses is, we want the values that the church holds. We want those values for our children, those values of unselfishness, putting others first, of generosity and kindness, of service. So we seek to live out those values. And it's important, just as it's important for those of us who are older in years to be prepared to continue to learn, it's also important, and our passage talks about encouraging the young people, our children, to have that learning, to instill in them that they can learn lessons for life and how to live it, not just the facts, not just knowledge. This is a big issue for those who are involved in education I think there's a problem with our culture in education being test and achievement based. I was talking to um, one of the teachers from Holy Trinity who was talking about, we were talking about the writing assessments. And she was saying they're now so geared on using these specific grammar skills and rules that there's no room for judging the actual quality of the writing. So that you might have a piece of writing that is absolutely perfect in how it's using its grammar, but frankly is rather boring, but it gets a really high mark. You might have another piece of writing that's really engaging, that makes her want to read the next page, um, but actually they haven't used the correct grammar, so it gets a low mark. However, it was interesting that this week Ofsted announced that they're going to change the way they do their assessment. We'll wait to see how it works out in practice. But they said that they want to revise their assessment criteria away from purely performance data to looking at the broad education and the diverse curriculum that goes deep and teaches children about life as well as knowledge and skills. We need to encourage our children to learn how to live a life, how to live a life that is right, just and fair. So we need to encourage and support teachers and staff in doing this. But it's not just a school responsibility. It's something for the whole community, for parents, carers, grandparents, our church community, to help our children learn those life lessons that they need to learn. I think some of the ways that we can help them do that is firstly to admit that we don't know it all, to admit to our children and young people when we face difficult decisions, as much as is appropriate to be open with them about the issues that we're facing, the things we're tussling with, to see what their advice, their thoughts might be. A really difficult one, this, but we need to allow them to experience and make decisions at the risk that they might make mistakes. That's one of the best ways that we learn about how to make good decisions, is sometimes when we make wrong ones, learning from our mistakes. We need to be like God, who when we make unwise decisions, forgives us and helps us to learn from them. We need to recognise this source of learning, learning about life, and to be an example. So as for today, we think about this introduction to Proverbs, and we think about that lifelong learning. We are reminded that God wants us to learn how to live life that is right, just, and fair. We're encouraged that we can learn from the master, from Jesus. 
but he is the example and source of wisdom and wise living. I'd like you to think about some questions. We're going to have a chance to think about these in a moment, but perhaps you continue to think about them through the week. Think where or what are you learning at the moment? It might be a new skill. It might not be a big life lesson, but maybe it's a life, an area of your life you're learning in, or maybe you've recently taken up learning something new. But where are you learning? Because we should always, always be learning. What issues are you facing where you're struggling to work out what is right, just or fair? How can you seek wisdom from God or follow Jesus closer as a teacher of wisdom? How can you teach or be an example or support others who are working with children and young people? Have a think about those. I encourage you, perhaps just turn to the person next to you and share something of your response Um, to those questions about where you see yourself learning at the moment, where you face issues that are tricky, how you can seek God, and how how could you teach or be an example to children in learning some of those life lessons. Just have a quick chat with the person next to you. So, sorry to um, draw your discussion. I um, hope that those discussions might continue over um, a coffee after the service or through, through the week um, with those you're with. But let's um, just take a moment of um, quiet and to pray for each other. So um, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. But if you could be praying for the people that you've been talking um, to and as we just bring those things before God. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are a source of wisdom to us all. We thank you that you go on teaching us and leading us in learning. We pray for all the decisions and issues that we face at this time. Help us to trust in you and to follow you. Thank you that you give us the ability to learn. Help us to always go on learning from you. And Lord, we pray particularly for our children and young people that you would help them in this complex world to learn what it means to follow you. 
Help us all to live lives that are right, just and fair. In your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.